broadcasting from the Texas, the beautiful Texas State Capitol building inside the offices of Representative John Frulo. And joining me in the office of Representative John Frulo is uh, the Speaker of the Texas House. Uh, always glad to have him on. Uh, Dennis Bonin, welcome back to the show. Uh, glad to have you here once again. Great to be here. Appreciate the invite. Absolutely. So, uh, in, in, in your opinion, you're, you're watching this session play out uh, when we joined you, I guess it was about a month ago now. That's right. um, you know, obviously, we've had some more movement. We've had some other things happen in the, uh, in the House. Uh, how are things moving along, in your opinion, during this session? From the House side, it's going exceptionally well. We passed uh, our budget, uh, I guess, about two weeks ago. And then last week, uh, couldn't be more proud of the House passing House Bill 3, our education reform and school finance reform bills. And then uh, later this week, we have scheduled to do House Bill 2, um, our property tax reform uh, bill transparency. So really, for the House, it's House Bill 1, House Bill 2, House Bill 3. And in the first three weeks of being able to pass bills on the House floor, we're going to get all three of those out of the House. And um, it's, it's great to be able to reduce property taxes by $2.7 billion across the board, reduce recapture by $3 billion, and then put billions into our education system through the basic allotment, allowing our local school districts to uh, make real improvements on the way they tape, pay teachers, but allowing our local districts to do it in a dynamic way so that they're able to reward the best teachers and not simply reward only, say, a best teacher in this area or that area, but also do it in the way that fits their district to serve the children the best. Uh, an example being if there's, say, a, a, a school, a middle school or an elementary school or a high school that is in a more challenging environment and it's a little harder to get a teacher over there, it allows our districts to say, we're going to give you all, any teacher that wants to go to elementary X, we're going to pay you 10000 more to go over there. Mm -hmm. That will change education in Texas. Uh, creating that kind of a competitive market and a market where we reward teachers for stepping up to challenges will change what we're seeing as a result. And, and in, in this bill uh, for education financing, how do we know, and, and, and that's, I think, been, you know, for a lot of the listeners who have called into the show and texted in, uh, they want to make sure that oh, they have no problem with, you know, teachers getting pay raises and all that. How do they make sure that that money is going to go to the classrooms, to the teachers, and not to, you know, maybe one school district goes, we can hire another assistant to the assistant to the assistant superintendent. Sure, and, and that would be very regrettable if that were to happen. Uh, one of the things we did in House Bill 3 is that we dictated that a percentage of that increase uh, revenues to the district's or state dollars must go to paying teachers. But the other thing is, I would point out, 80% of a school district's budget is paying people. Right. And so the reality of it is, a huge percentage of that money is going to go to pay uh, those teachers. And what's of great importance to us is that we are paying teachers in a dynamic fashion so that we change it back to being a real profession <clears throat> and not simply being uh, kind of this factory system where everyone's paid the same, treated the same, and the biggest problem I have with the way we handle paying a teacher today is it's not fair to the teacher. You begin at 48000 and 20 years later, 25 years later, you finish at sixty. Right. That's not fair to the teachers. Um, I want to see teachers making eighty, ninety, dollars $100,000 a year in Texas, and I want to allow our districts to make the decision as to what teachers and what areas of the greatest need are being provided those raises. And let's talk about the, the property tax portion of uh, school financing. Uh, this is something that uh, I, I, there is concern uh, over. You, you have uh, the property tax legislation uh, that's going to be debated uh, on Thursday. The 2.5% the trigger was moved out of that um, b because there were a lot of folks who were, I guess, not happy with that trigger being in there. For education, what is to prevent? I know you have the property no. taxes that are being compressed in this in the education financing right. bill. What's to prevent a school district from saying, "Okay, yes, we we were compressed in 2020, but guess what? 2021, we're jacking those rates back up." Well, first off, it wasn't taken out because people are unhappy. Um, the reality of it is, is that that is a piece of what we're doing in House Bill 3 and in education. And so the reality of it is, by having um, the 2.5% on education, we have to find a revenue stream for the state of Texas to cover that cost. Uh, the reality of it is, we're all for 2.5% in the Texas House on education. 
we have to produce a revenue stream to cover those state for state dollars so that we don't fall into the courts again on an equity issue. And the reality of it is we have compressed those rates and the districts don't have the ability to drive those rates straight back up. Um, but the state must find a revenue stream or else we are going to have a system that is right back in the courts and we will not have the dollars for education and we will lose equity in a quick, quick way. So in, in the, in the uh, financing bill that was just passed through the House, uh, you're pretty confident that's not going to be challenged in the courts? No, that we should not be good. Be, that we should be good. Um, now, I want to be clear. Uh, what we're learning is that, you know, good, that means hopefully a decade, maybe longer. Right. Um, you know, with a dynamic growing state, you're never going to pass uh, an education finance system that never, ever has a need for rebalance or anything down the road. I think there's some who hope maybe that wouldn't be necessary, but I've been here long enough to know that nothing's perfect, nothing's uh, uh, forever. But I do believe the bill that we passed will give Texas uh, well beyond a decade of quality funding for education. We do have to find a revenue stream, though, to ensure that we have equity not become a problem and that we hold those tax rates at the lower level that we desire. What is your, when moving, uh, moving ahead to Thursday and, and looking at property tax uh, and the, the debate that will ensue there, uh, how would you like to see this, this bill end up looking? What would you like to see? Well, the most powerful thing that, that I know is going to happen is the transparency. Um, the greatest frustration that a local property taxpayer feels is they can't get a straight answer for who's responsible for an increase in my property taxes. You know, I talk to the school, they say they didn't have anything to do with it. I talk to the city, they didn't do it. I talk to the county, they don't know why or where it happened. And the reality is that's what drives taxpayers crazy. Um, this bill has the most powerful transparency components that anyone's ever seen in dealing with property taxes. For the first time ever, you'll receive a notice that shows you exactly who wants to raise your taxes in the time and date and location, you can go have a conversation about that with that local entity before they ever even choose to do it. And so that, I believe, is the most powerful thing that will happen. Um, what I'd like to see is a bill that successfully passes the House, which I believe it will. And it's really up to the members of the House to decide what the right formula is to do that. On a personal level, um, last session when I worked on this bill, I think something that uh, creates a balance so that you can actually have that rate move, um, have it indexed, I think makes sense. Um, if the members want to index it, that's great. If they don't, that's their decision. But I think if you look at the history of a revenue cap, the reason we're at eight with a petition, which mm -hmm. is pitiful, is that it was originally passed and then infl inflation immediately hit. I believe it was originally passed at like a four. Inflation hits, the legislature reacts, and they take it to an eight. If you index it, those reactions don't have to occur. And, and the indexing moves with, with the uh, cost of goods and with the economy. And so you don't have us coming back and, and doing a knee-jerk reaction and undoing good policy. When, when your members look at uh, property tax reform, obviously the Texas Senate's gonna do something different. Does it creep into your mind and into other House members when they're looking at what that trigger is going to be, do they worry about the Texas Senate or is that, does that come later? That comes later. Um, the Senate, you know, it's, it's what we've always done. The Senate, um, we had a great working relationship with the Senate this session. Um, the Senate's going to do what works for the Senate and what makes sense to the Senate and the House needs to do what makes sense for us um, and what works for us. And then uh, the beauty of the system is we go to a conference committee and uh, we work out whatever discrepancies and differences that exist through the legislation and, and get a good result for the people of Texas. Um, on this issue, I don't think you're going to see significant differential uh, between the House and Senate. Um, the reality of it is we're all pretty close on where we're going. This has been an interesting, uh, interesting session. A lot of uh, a lot of called it, and I think we, we talked about this last time the the kumbaya session, uh, where the the leaders are all together uh, right now, and and I think we're we're still seeing that that hold. Um, there are some groups who have uh, attacked the the you know the Republicans uh, not being conservative anymore. You've seen the headlines sure. uh, that are out there. Well, I don't know if I call them headlines. They're more from groups that. Uh, 
make their living attacking uh, Republicans. Well, and, and I want you to comment on that, because, and, and here's why. Uh, the, the budget that was passed under your leadership, uh, unanimous. Mm -hmm. uh, the education financing, almost unanimous, one person voting against. Because he was told to vote against it by the people who make their living off of attacking us. And, and property tax reform, I'm pretty sure it's going to be within the realm of that, unanimous. No, no, I don't think property tax reform probably will be unanimous. You don't? No. Okay. I'd love it to be, but I'd be quite surprised. Well, let, maybe among there Republicans. Of, there are a lot of, yeah, hopefully among Republicans it is, yes. Yeah. But, so you see some of those stories, mm -hmm. blogs, whatever you want to call them, uh, about have, have Republicans turned French, have, uh, sure. you know, Republic, there was a story from the Daily Caller, what was it, uh, why are Texas Republicans acting like Democrats? When you see these stories, what is your reaction to that? It's a shame that people have to make a living and in, in, in spread lies and false things just so they can rally troops to raise money and continue attacking people. I was elected speaker with 78 Republicans. You need 76 votes to become Speaker of the Texas House. Um, I'm proud to have had Democrat support, but the reality of it is I was elected by the Republican caucus. And the truth of it is we are governing as conservatives and we are governing for the people of Texas. And uh, we also are showing the right way to get things done. Um, passing a transformative education bill that, oh, by the way, I'd like to ask these groups, when the last time someone cut their property taxes with $2.7 billion, is that somehow not conservative? When's the last time someone put $3 billion to reducing recapture, a problem that has plagued this state for years? So if that's not conservative, give me a call. And you know the number. That's right. They know how to get in touch Absolutely. with you, I'm sure. Right? They do. Yeah, at not showing up at your house. That's that, right. Let's, let's be honest. That, that was a... a uh, and and, and uh, part of my language here, that was a BS move. It was. Uh, you know, th there's a right way to lobby people, a That's wrong right. way to lobby people. I know they showed up at your house. They showed up at, uh, at, at Representative Burroughs, and I think believe one Price. other. For Price's house. Uh, have you heard from those groups? Have you? Yeah, it's been really have you offensive. Heard from oh, anybody? yeah, it's, it's been extraordinarily offensive. And let me explain what happened because it's, it's rather um, despicable. So first on Tuesday, they went to Representative Burroughs' home, who fortunately his wife was doing pickup, carpool pickup from school. So if they'd been 15 minutes earlier or 15 minutes later, they would have found a wife and three young boys at the house. But she was doing carpool. Then um, went by his district office, flashed his gun in the district office to the staff, then went to Representative Price's house, <clears throat> went from Lubbock to Amarillo, in the same day, took a picture of Representative Price's house with his street sign in front of it, um, so you show his address, posted on social media to the world, and then he, when he's in Representative um, Burroughs' office, this has all been reported to me by DPS, we wouldn't have known these things, he says that he's going from Burroughs to four prices to then my home, which my home is, you know, a couple hundred miles away. Right, yeah. And so the next day, um, DPS decided to put a trooper on our residence, so the next day, he shows up at our home. On Wednesday, the day we passed the budget, I'm sorry, we passed, yeah, it was the budget. Right. Um, so he knew where I was. He knew where Representative Burroughs was, and he knew where Representative Price was. We were in Austin, Texas, doing our jobs as elected re representatives. He knew where we were, and more importantly, he knew where we were not. We were not at our homes. It was a clear effort to intimidate and threaten. And when you think about it, it's on an issue allowing a criminal the ability to carry a gun. Because the only person in Texas today who legally can't carry a gun is a criminal, period. And oh, by the way, they can get a gun too if they want to. The state just hadn't surrendered the concept that a criminal probably shouldn't just be told without question you ought to have a gun. Right. And it protects law enforcement and having the ability to better police. And be, when they walk up to you and I, Chad, and we each have a gun, if the bill they want passes, they can't ask us whether we should have a gun or what we're doing with it or what's going on. Um, and presently, I think it's a good idea that law enforcement, who I support 100%, I think most Texans do, and they're 100% against uh, criminal carry. But more importantly, to show up at a residence when you know the person you're supposedly wanting to have influence over, which you have every right to have influence over us, you know where they are and you know they are not at that home. Right. That's despicable. And to choose to do that to Representative Burroughs, where you know there are three young boys there, and this gentleman 
has worked in the state Senate. He knows this process. He knows what's going on. He knows how this works. What angered me is that after he showed up at my home, and the only reason DPS was watching my house is because of his actions at Mr. Burroughs' home and Mr. Price's home the day before and the comments he made in Mr. Burroughs' district office where he flashed his gun, is because DPS said they needed to watch my home. So then after he is stopped by DPS approaching my house, he then puts on social media that I'm not an average citizen. I have to have protection. Bullshit. That protection was there for two young boys and a wife who didn't sign up for this at their home. And that's how despicable and gutless these individuals have chosen to behave. And it really does make you question if these are the actions, and if you look at what they've said and done on social media, um, if these are the actions of the people that are fighting for a bill that in our great state of Texas, the NRA put something out this weekend, we have pretty, pretty wide open, pretty good gun laws allowing the right to carry. We are strong Second Amendment state. I am a 100 percent. In 22 years in the Texas House, I have a 100 percent voting record with the NRA and the State Rifle Association. But it really makes you wonder when it's these type of behaviors, these type of individuals that are pushing a bill that simply changes the new nuance of the law from a criminal can carry a gun without being questioned to presently we don't allow criminals to have a gun. Representative Stickland pulled his bill uh, from, from a hearing. Have you heard from him? Uh, we've had some conversations. Uh, he's struggling with how to handle this because now they're attacking him for him standing up and saying, um, this is not the way to do this. Right. Um, he still supports his bill, um, but it, it just shows you the insanity and the overzealous and craziness um, that these images have. Because, oh, by the way, I don't know about you, but I got a big, big, I got the biggest safe you can buy at Tractor Supply full of guns at my house. You don't have a problem getting a gun in Texas if you're a responsible, law-abiding citizen who can pass a background check. Before we let you go, we're visiting with Speaker Dennis Bonin here on the Chad Hasty Show. We've got a couple of minutes left here in this segment. Uh, after we get through uh, HB 1, 2, 3, after we get through that, what's the next big thing on your plate? Well, we have, uh, we have some actually... We have some Second Amendment bills that will be coming um, that actually do something um, besides allowing a criminal to carry a gun uh, without concern. Uh, we've got some Second Amendment things coming. We have some pro-life bills that are coming on the way. Um, and then, truthfully, it's up to the membership. Um, the members drive what comes to the floor. I mean, that's one of the things that's been lost in this whole discussion. Members drive what comes to the floor. We have our committee chairs. We have the individual members. They get to decide what they want to bring to the floor. But the beauty of it is, is what we've done in the Texas House is we have prioritized our budget, school finance, education, and property tax reform and relief. And those will be handled in the first three weeks of passing bills out of this body. We have until May 9th to pass a House bill. We will be done by the end of this week passing the top priorities for the Texas House. And then after that, the members are going to get to work on their priority issues um, within their local districts. So of course, those three are the top priorities in those districts. Um, but the truth of it is the members are going to drive that agenda as they have this entire session. They've driven property tax reform. They've driven school finance reform. They've driven paying teachers in a dynamic way. They've driven reducing your property taxes. And they've driven reducing recapture. Speaker Dennis Bonin, appreciate your time today. Let's get, get you uh, back on as the Thank session you. comes to a close. Thanks, Chad.